Coming up on Podcast 1542, Porsche sees their EVs as more profitable than their combustion counterparts. Stick around and I'll tell you what I know. Also on the podcast today, we're talking about GM and their plan to be bigger than Tesla by 2025. Something I've said many times, I'm doubtful of, but good luck to anyone with big EV plans. Toyota's federal tax credit was nearing the end, but have they got to the phase-out stage yet? We'll update you on that. And which US state leads the way with home charger installation? Uh, find out on the podcast today. That and a lot more to discuss on EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to the show. We are your trusted source of EV information every day, Monday, 25th of July today. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story, so you don't have to. We'll kick off with our first story today, talking about the Mercedes-Benz Vision X. I was lucky enough to meet the uh, lead engineer on this project just a few weeks ago at a conference that we were both at. Fascinating, fascinating guy uh, who talked about like the the point of this vehicle was to come up with technologies that will feed their way into Mercedes Benz electric vehicles over the years. And what I didn't say to him because I didn't want to be rude or you know, whatever. It's I just met the guy was yeah that's all well and good if Mercedes let these technologies filter into the company like they haven't like they're not exactly leading the way. Their EVs are good, but you know. They're not at the back of the pack, but they're not at the front either. Uh, let's hope they do listen to the the teams that put this vehicle together. Uh, Vision EQ Double X is that swoopy concept car that uh, a few months ago did a thousand kilometer run across Europe, and now uh, just did a longer run from Germany to the UK. It went to Silverstone, did some laps, went down to do uh, Goodwood as well, and now they've let the media have a go in it. It's time to let the journalists drive it. Fully Charged got a good video about this. Uh, Slash Gear got a good article. I, I chose the CNET article to have a look today. The writer says uh, there's plenty of forward visibility in the car, but rearward, well, you can't see so much because solar panels occupy the whole roof. No rear glass whatsoever. No rear view mirror. And traditional side mirrors, shock horror. I thought everything had to come with a camera these days if it was an electric vehicle. But no, they're too heavy. And they, guess what? They use electricity. So they're out and they've got these things called side mirrors. I, I don't know what they are. I mean, maybe they could add them to all cars one day. Sorry, I'm being cheeky. Move on. Uh, this car runs its own unique infotainment system, says CNET. And it's all about schooling the driver on how to get the most from what you've got. They say, and I quote, airflow diagrams point out wind speed and direction while displaying the status of its front shutter and extendable rear diffuser. Another page shows where the sun is positioned relative to the solar panels. Uh, my favourite screen shows a variety of speeds above and below mine and how changing my speed will affect my expected route efficiency writes CNET. And that's really interesting because driver education is going to be a really interesting thing with electric vehicles as they become more mainstream and we tell people about how their driving is going to affect your range and the weather and the temperature and the wind and all those things. Uh, a lot to learn. Not that you have to learn it to drive an EV. Just get in an electric car and just drive it. But if you want to learn all that stuff, then some car companies are very good at that, showing you state of charge in you know, single or digits as a percentage. Others hide it from you. You want to charging speed. Some EV makers show you charging speed. Some don't. So I think there should be an option in every menu to get as granular as you want. Because I don't mind clicking two or three buttons if I want to have a look at the voltage of my pack, uh, state of health, all those things. But my wife, in a million years, with for, you know, all respect to her, she wants to get in the car and look at range and know that that range estimate is real. And that actually, if it says 150 miles and she's doing a 100-mile journey, ah, she's got plenty spare, right? So, But it should be there buried somewhere. 100-kilowatt-hour battery pack in this uh, advanced anode chemistry uh, as some sort of experimental stuff they're doing. Uh, big cast aluminium single rear floor as well, biggest than any vehicle uh, that Mercedes-Benz make. That's all about being stiff in a crash structure, but also being very lightweight. And the average efficiency that this writer got out of it was 8.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Or, to flip it around, if this is your language, 7.57 miles per kilowatt hour, which is at least double uh, an average, an averagely good electric vehicle. Uh, doing decent speeds as well, by the way. We can all hype a mile and drive at 20 miles um, an hour. So, yeah, recently drove from Stuttgart to Silverstone. 
and uh, and broke some records as well. I'll pop a link to that story in the show notes. Now, uh, General Motors have consistently said they'll be bigger than Tesla and will dominate the US market by 2025. And it's five years since they made a big declaration of going EV. And they have made wonderful progress. What it was initially the Ultium battery cell, that name has been widened to basically the whole platform these days, which is about the right thing. But at the minute, in the US, they have a 6% market share of electric vehicles. Uh, they're being outside, outsold by Ford and Hyundai. But Mary Barra, who has been at the helm of that company for a really long time now, believes that that platform they've got, the battery partners building batteries on US soil and doing their own software, is the foundation they need to double the company revenue by 2030 and be bigger than Tesla by 2025, which I have consistently said on this podcast, on the Inside EVs one as well, um, I don't understand how they're going to do that because they just, I haven't seen, and if it's out there, please, listeners, share it with me. I haven't seen how they're going to do that in terms of raw numbers. I mean, Fremont for Tesla just got 10% bigger. Uh, Texas, 250,000, same as Berlin. Shanghai went from 450 to 750, uh, you know, knocking on the door of 2 million vehicle. Um, whether you're pro or, or whatever, Tesla, you can pick a number between one and a half and you know two million vehicles a year in the not too distant future. So and then people say, oh no, but GM are only talking about the US numbers, which is fair, but that's not always reported in the media. And even then, so they've got to be bigger than Fremont and they've got to be, so they've got to do like GM have to do 750,000 if Tesla don't improve. By the middle of the decade, like, oh, maybe they can, but I'd like to know the numbers uh, to work out where they're going to make those vehicles and battery supply, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This article says that other legacy automakers, including Ford, BMW and Toyota, aren't expected to start production with a dedicated EV platform for a few years because of the time it takes to develop one. Is that not unfair to Ford? Isn't the Mustang Mach-E on its own platform as a kind of offshoot from the, the one that the Ford Focus is on? I don't know. Uh, I'll have a look. Uh, they say at GM, Mary Barra says, we already have what other people are now just talking about what they're going to do. And I don't think the world quite realises that yet, she says. Uh, the executives at GM still say uh, that they will overtake Tesla by 2025. Okay, well, yeah, good luck. I just, on that CNBC article, I just still don't know the numbers out of just Tell us the, the raw numbers out of what plants, at what factories, you'll be doing more numbers than Tesla by 2025. And we can all see. But otherwise, you know, GM have been very good at making big, bold claims. <laughs> no, not so good at making electric vehicles. But they claim there's lots and lots of them on the way. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, headline story. And CEOs for years have been warning that the transition to EVs is going to be bad for buyers because EVs are going to cost way more. They can't sell them at the same price as their combustion vehicles. They've been telling their boards and their owners, oh, we can't make electric vehicles because we don't make the profit margins. But all of a sudden, now that EVs are hot and Porsche is about to do an IPO at the end of the year, hang on a minute, EVs are really good. And ahead of its possible public listing before the end of the year. Porsche is now telling its investors it can be, um, become more profitable if they make electric vehicles. They see more potential to raise prices of their EVs than their combustion engine models, uh, the CFO said during Porsche's Capital Markets Day early last week. He sees the manufacturer's EV margins reaching parity with combustion vehicles in two years, then expanding because customers are willing to pay more for new technology, writes independent.ie. Management expects eight in ten Porsches sold by the end of the decade to run on electricity and for EVs to be half the luxury automotive market by 2031, they say. Now, let's talk about Toyota and the $7,500 federal tax credit. So if your personal tax situation means that you pay that much tax, uh, you can get a discount off next year's uh, tax liability by buying an electric car from those car makers that still have a federal tax credit on. So no, not GM and no, not Tesla. But, and soon, no, not Ford, I think if not now, then very soon. Uh, but <laughs> Toyota have just hit the official phase-out schedule for Toyota and Lexus electric vehicles before they've even got round to making and selling, you know, electric vehicles. Uh, they reached the milestone of 200,000 plug-in electric cars cumulatively in the US in Q2 of this year. So that triggers the 
phase out of the $7,500 federal tax credit. Soon you only get half of that for the next two quarters, and then you only get 25% for the final two quarters up to uh, this time next year. So if you go to go to go and buy a Toyota EV from the 1st of October, uh, they're basically $3,750 more expensive. Uh, they used up all of their federal tax credits with plug-in hybrids. Slow hand clap to you, Toyota. Uh, the compliance car, the Toyota RAV4, and uh, the all-new Toyota BZ4X enters the market at a time when they lose their federal tax credit. Well done. Now, let's talk about EVs covering more ground than combustion counterparts, uh, according to this article in autoblog.com. Because apparently EVs can't go very far. We, you know, we've, we've all been told that, right? Uh, Autoblogs say, while gasoline prices have come down from their highs earlier this summer, drivers are feeling plenty of pain at the pump unless you drive an EV when you could be feeling smug, they say. And I'm really not, actually, because I know that a lot of people have to drive the car that they've got because you know, second, third, fourth hand cars of a few thousand pounds or dollars or whatever, cheap to buy, expensive to run. But if you have got to go to work to earn money, if you're a school teacher, a, you know, a nurse, you're working, you need your car to get to where you're going to go. No, I don't feel smug that these people are spending a lot more money than I am to charge my car, which at the minute is free because it's summertime in the UK and we have a 5.9 kWp PV system. So, any excess solar can either go to our home battery because we have the solar edge uh, battery in the garage, 10 kilowatt hours, or it goes into the car as excess before it goes back to the grid. So it doesn't cost us anything to do our transport this time of year in a British summertime and long days. But no, I don't feel smug about that. Anyway, uh, the latest data from the nation's statistical energy agency in Norway shows that their electric cars are driving more annually on average, than combustion. The average distance travelled by diesel and petrol has been falling steadily for 15 years now, and it highlights the growing capability of the latest EV models and implications for what happens to oil demand, says Autoblog. Uh, the amount of oil displaced by EVs depends on how fast we switch the number of miles travelled to electric. It's what I'm always talking about with working vehicles, right? Taxis, trucks, etc., etc. Yeah, let's move our own cars over to electric but also let's move working vehicles to electric because those are the ones doing a ton of mileage every single day and it makes a bigger difference and it moves the needle quicker than our own cars but either way uh, to understand it better uh, they say they give the example of a two-car family one vehicle electric one vehicle diesel or petrol and because evs cost so much less to run the family shifts more miles to the ev and maybe they keep they you know, commuting their chores, etc., etc., family chores at the weekend to EV, but occasionally do a long distance journey, whatever, in their diesel car or use it as a spare car, occasional trips. The amount of cars on the road is important, but the number of miles driven electric is also important. And in Norway, which is a market that's ahead of many other markets, that is seriously changing. Right, coming up on the podcast very soon, we'll take a look at Ireland boosting measures to take up EVs. It there and Jaguar Land Rover update as well as they electrify. Stick around those stories, they're on the way. Now, let's talk California leading the way in the EV home charger market. Whilst most American drivers rely on home charging for EVs, not all areas are equal, according to the Home Improvement Service Porch. If you look at EV um, registrations on real estate listings, they found that California leads the way. Uh, Riverside, California was the top metro area for home chargers. 20% of households come equipped with one. Uh, Riverside followed by San Francisco, San Jose and Los Angeles at 8.6%. Sacramento and San Diego also in the top 10. Yes, there are lots of EVs in California, but that doesn't automatically mean there would be lots of home chargers, if that makes sense. I mean, there's plenty of EVs in New York City. They have 100,000 plug-in cars in New York City, but they had 0.5% of homes with chargers. So it depends on the area, the urban area, how the vehicles are used, um, and the kind of properties that are in those areas as well. And I must admit, we didn't get an EV until we got a driveway and moved into this house that we're in right now. Can you have an EV in an apartment or with off-street parking? Absolutely. But we went EV a long time ago. And yes, it could have been done 
it would probably would have been a bit of a faff, if I'm honest with you. Uh, infrastructure very, very different all those years ago. So, you know, when we moved here, we got driveway, got our first Renault Zoe, 22 kilowatt hour. Never look back. Right. Ireland is boosting the uptake of EVs with new measures. Their Department of Transport with a suite of new grants and initiatives to support adoption of electric vehicles for home charging, for smart charging, for commercial vehicles. Four new initiatives being introduced to support EV adoption, they say. The Transport Minister announcing an expansion to the home charging grant to help tenants and homeowners apply for grants to put in home chargers, uh, even for visitor use. If you haven't got a an EV yourself yet, don't own one, but you can still get some grant money to put an EV charger in to be ready for the future, but also when your relatives and friends come to visit and drive their EVs. Uh, Electrive says, a new trial to promote and encourage the electrification of commercial fleets also announced, giving businesses the opportunity to test an EV free of charge for three months to show benefits, savings and suitability and viability of EVs in a commercial and fleet setting. Honestly, fleets, it's everything. We talk about the cars that you and I buy all the time on this podcast, but I mean, fleets, it's everything. Let's get businesses to electric vehicles as soon as possible. Now, I have had the uh, iPace in my driveway in the past. It lived with me for a month. What a lovely month that was uh, when a brand new iPace showed up for me to have a test drive in. But Jaguar Land Rover are behind the curve on electric vehicles. Over the next four years, though, Land Rover will have six electric variants across their two architectures, the MLA and the EMA. Uh, Owned by Tata Motors, Jaguar Land Rover says 60% of their global Land Rover sales will be pure electric, not fudging it with electrified, and some car makers do, but saying pure electric by 2030. They say, alongside its product transformation, Jaguar is creating a strong digital culture, efficiently integrating technologies and analytics to allow the team to design a more rewarding engagement between the brand and the consumer, according to the uh, Economic Times. I'll pop a link to that story in the show notes. Now, notes. now a Mercedes-Benz survey finding many people in the US can see themselves in an electric vehicle. A Cantar study was done for Mercedes-Benz, 80% of premium car drivers planning to switch to an EV in the next five years. Uh, 66% of them are going to finance their new car. Online purchasing, direct sales, very, very popular in terms of buying an EV in the uh, three countries they surveyed. Vast majority of respondents said that they can see themselves in an EV. Uh, China, 96% of people said they could see themselves in an EV. Germany, 80%. US, 68%. Uh, Just to give you an indication of how things differ around the world in terms of people's perceptions towards electric vehicles. It's a really important thing, actually. Staying in China, BYD, the world's biggest EV maker, is getting ready for entry into not only the Japanese, but South Korean market as well, going head-to-head with Hyundai, you know, Kia, Genesis, etc. Industry sources saying yesterday, over the weekend, on Sunday, uh, the BYD are renting office space near Seoul and now recruiting personnel, uh, after sales, service, marketing, etc. The Chinese auto giant also registering uh, trademarks for their EVs. They're things like the Seal, um, the their first EV with battery cells integrated, a cell-to-pack, not even cell-to-pack, cell-to-body. Tesla call it structural battery pack, but others are doing this as well. Tesla get much of the credit, but BYD have been doing this for a while too. Uh, they sold the most EVs around the world in the first half of this year. Uh, 647,000 plug-in vehicles versus Tesla's 575, but that also includes hybrids for BYD as well. Always be careful when you see plug-in, always look at the breakdown. China, by the way, leading the world in the development of batteries for EVs. A new report by their Ministry of Industry and Information Technology uh, saying at the end of last week uh, they have 531.9 gigawatt hours of installed battery capacity on Chinese roads. The top three companies for making batteries are all Uh, coming from uh, China, South Korea, and Japan. Those areas are dominating the EV battery industry. And Beijing wants to transform Chinese cities by using the land owned by petrol stations to be EV hubs. And according to the city's power development plan for the next four years, uh, revealed Friday uh, by the Beijing Municipal Commission of Urban Management. There you go. Uh, The document doesn't give us too much more information, uh, but they aim to have 310 battery swap stations by the middle of the decade, 700,000 chargers, and they want to explore the use of battery storage too. 
which is a very smart thing to do. Uh, companies like Sinopec, the largest supplier of petrol products in China, they have 30,000 petrol stations. And I was always very, very sceptical in the past, saying let's not replicate the old distribution model for the new era of electric vehicles. But actually, uh, you know, multiple listeners have pointed out to me over the years, yes, but petrol companies are very good at knowing where cars are because they don't build petrol stations where there aren't cars. Um, also very good at knowing uh, where to put, think, land and how often can be close to big grid connections um, and often in built-up areas as well. Now, these areas haven't been built on in terms of real estate development because they're petrol stations still um, and that that land can be turned into EV charging stations because land in built up areas is is rare it's like hen's teeth so uh, I kind of get that now Tesla are making their move into Turkey installing the first supercharger uh, at a motorway service station in Turkey if you want to drive across Europe with superchargers it's largely very easy but the the further east sorry the further west uh, you get they do thin out and there are none in Turkey, but uh, Tesla will enter the Turkish market uh, with all of their models by the end of the year. So now the supercharger network is is going into Turkey, which is fantastic. Any of my Turkish listeners, if there are many of you out there uh, listening to this podcast. I hope that I hope there are some. Uh, that's good news for you if you want to buy a Tesla. Thank you for listening uh, today. Make sure uh, that if you are not subscribed, and I'm sure you are already, uh, but if you are not subscribed, then you can open up your favourite podcast app, search EV News or EV News Daily. You'll find me, hit subscribe, uh, and get this and the five-minute show every single day as well. Question of the week, taking a little break for a while. Thank you to our patrons and all of our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Porsche of the Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, National Car Charging on the US mainland, and Aloha Charge in Hawaii, Derek Riley from the EV Review Island YouTube channel, Richard at rsev.co.uk for buying and selling EVs in the UK, Octopus Electric Juice, they make public charging simple with one card one map and one app and millbrookcottages.co.uk for five star luxury cottages in devon you can jump in the hot tub while your ev charges have a good and see tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid